Hi, my name is Micah Thompson, and this is my company comparison analysis for Ford Motor Company and Apple Inc. Ford Motor Company is an American, American multinational automaker headquartered in Deborn, Michigan. It was founded by Henry Ford in 1903. The company manufactures and sells cars, SUVs, and trucks. Ford has a history of innovation and is most known for pioneering large-scale manufacturing through its assembly line production method. Apple Inc. is an American multinational technology company headquartered in Cupertino, California. It was founded by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak in 1976. Steve Jobs later became CEO in 2000 and took the company in a new direction. He expanded his portfolio from personal computers to consumer electronics, giving birth to creations like the iPod, the iPad, and of course, the iPhone. Apple is now the world's largest technology company based on revenue. It, also, it is also the world's largest mobile phone manufacturer after Samsung and Huawei. Both Ford and Apple seem to adhere to the same value discipline product leadership. Ford's mission is to become the world's most trusted company designing smart vehicles for a smart world. This is an evolution of its founding mission of advancing human progress by providing freedom of movement. The company believes that in this digital age, building smart vehicles is vital in supporting human progress and improving lives. Apple leads in the same way, stating that its mission is to bring the best user experience to its customers through its innovative, hardware, software, and services. Moreover, Apple believes that they are on the face of this earth to make great products. It's evident that both companies strive to lead their respective industries by developing new and innovative products. With slogans like Built Ford Proud and Ford, quality is job one. Ford has traditionally targeted consumers who seek quality and take pride and American-made products. More recently, though, it has altered its brand to appeal to more tech-savvy, younger consumers. These consumers are more willing to share data, which is an asset for Ford's growing data capabilities. This customer segment is also known for delaying home and car purchases for later in life, which is one of the reasons why Ford is prioritizing its mobility offerings, like ride-sharing and e-scooters. In an effort to attract and retain new customer base, Ford launched Ford Pass on April 2nd, 2019. Ford Pass is a customer service app that allows customers to monitor vehicles and make service appointments. In addition, customers with Ford Pass rewards can receive points toward vehicle maintenance and service costs when they buy or lease a new Ford. The, the app generated a, a substantial response Within a few months of launch, the Ford Pass had nearly 1.5 million users. Apple has stayed rather consistent with its targeting over the past two decades. With its tagline, Think Different, Apple has sought to attract creative types, students, artists, and entrepreneurs. The company does not shy away from high prices, positioning itself as a somewhat of a luxury brand this strategy works well in cultivating customer loyalty. Over the years, Apple has built a strong customer base without ever having an official loyalty program. It developed a cult brand by simply developing really cool products. Many people associate Apple products with style, modernity, and forward thinking. This persona is valuable to consumers and owning Apple products helps show off their exclusive membership in the Apple family. However, Apple's retention strategy does not stop with cool products. The company has also built loyalty by developing unique and innovative customer experiences. The Apple Store is known for its relatable customer service reps and Genius Groves, originally called Genius Bars, where customers don't just buy products, but they learn about them. In select cities, Apple has embedded itself in the community by creating spaces where people can gather for free Wi-Fi, weekend concerts, and massive video displays. They also have youth programs where kids can learn coding and other computer skills for free. Both companies are making big investments in big data 
and AI. Ford reportedly plans to buy two data centers and increase data volume by 1,000%. Apple plans to spend $10 billion during the next five years to build data centers in the U.S. What exactly each company plans to do with all that data is still unclear, but it will certainly help inform marketers on consumers. Each company captures data in similar ways through the connectivity of their consumer products. Ford collects data through its smart cars and Apple collects through its smart phones. Apple has had smart products longer than Ford, which means it probably has much more data to work with. But by the end of this year, Ford expects to have all North American cars connected. And by 2020, it expects to have 90% of its global fleet connected, providing all the data it needs on its vehicles and customers. When it comes to digital transformation, both companies have made significant strides. The company, uh, the key events that prompted digital change for Ford and Apple were almost identical. For Ford, record low car sales led to a new strategy and reorganization of the company. For Apple, record low iPhone sales led to the same actions. In response, both companies changed key executive roles and prioritized other segments of their businesses. Ford President and CEO Jim Hackett interpreted the issue as a profound change where rapidly advancing technology and innovation are disrupting the auto industry. Ford's response was to stay ahead by designing smart vehicles for a smart world. The company stopped making and selling its unprofitable sedan, sedan and hatchback models like the Ford Focus, Fiesta, Taurus, and Fusion to focus on its SUVs, trucks, and smart vehicles. Ford is also prioritizing its mobility offerings like its transit custom rideshare service. In order to take on this new direction, Ford made significant organizational changes. Besides changing key executive roles, the company elevated its IT group to support enterprise-wide decision-making. Its, its IT work went from being project-based to product-based. They were given fewer projects, making the work more focused and clear. Ford hired Paul Ballou as chief data and analytics officer. Ballou centralized Ford's various analytics groups to form the Global Data Insight and Analytics Group. This group doubled in size within two years and has become responsible for all of Ford's digital initiatives. Apple has also hired a new leader for data and analytics. John Giannandria from Google became head of machine learning and AI strategy. In the process, Apple demoted the head of Siri, Bill Stazier. Siri is a well-known symbol of AI development at Apple, but companies like Google and Amazon have quickly surpassed Apple with AI innovations of their own. By hiring Giannandria, Apple hopes to get back into the game. Similar to Ford, Apple put a stop on costly projects to focus on a different segment of its portfolio. What's ironic is while Ford was driving headfirst into autonomous vehicles, Apple was pulling the plug. The company recently cut hundreds of workers from its self-driving car projects, one, from being, one of them being Project Titan, which was led by Ford, uh, former Ford engineer, Apple is now prioritizing its services business, like its third-party apps, insurance, storage, paid services, music, and entertainment. It seems like a good move considering its services segment generated record revenues of $10.9 billion in quarter one of 2019. Apple is even now considering launching a subscription service for its iPhones. Both Ford and Apple are eager to use data science in various functions and units of their enterprise. These initiatives even extend to HR department. Most recently, both companies have incorporated analytics in their personnel decisions. These include decisions related to recruiting, workforce management, employee sensing, and compensation. While researching this topic, I came across several open people analytics positions for both companies. It seems that people analytics is an emerging field and both Ford and Apple are quickly adopting it. However, it's hard to tell how heavily each company is relying on algorithms to make these human resource decisions. 
Through this analysis, I've learned that companies from different industries founded almost 100 years apart experience some of the same challenges and respond in very similar ways. Both Ford and Apple experienced record declines in sales in their primary product lines. It seems that both companies realized that change was inevitable. And if they didn't respond to these disruptions quickly and strategically, they would get left behind. I've learned that from this study, adaptability is imperative. And the best way to stay relevant is by continuously learning and innovating. Hope you enjoyed my presentation. Here's my references. Thank you for watching.